just a real brief before I get into the nuts and bolts of this thing. I come from the film business. So before construction, eight years I've been in construction. I was in the film business. I was a grunt. I worked as a grip, and then I worked my way up to directing commercials. Recession hit. I didn't know what to do. I got into construction. I fell into it. I don't have any formal training. I was the kid on a job site asking all the questions. And then I started learning. If I ask the right people, I can learn more. And that's how I grew my business. Going into the business, I didn't want to touch yellow pages. I didn't want to touch traditional ways because coming from the film business, I already knew everything was shifting regarding marketing. So I thought social media. So four years ago, I started on social media. Okay, so I started with um, YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and I touched a little bit of Instagram. I didn't touch it four years ago, right? So I knew that I was going to start developing um, videos and content and stuff like that, and I was going to feature product and, and product and things like that. So I got to begin with a disclaimer. This is what I did to build my business, and this is what I did to build my social media. Okay, there's a lot of things that were right, and there's still things that are I'm learning, and still things that I'm trying to get a grasp of. But I'm also paying attention to what other bigger brands are doing. One thing I did learn from the get-go four years ago was construction social media is completely different than any other social media that is bombarded to you guys for any other product you guys buy. Construction is completely different. The way we look at social media for construction, it's it's a different animal, and there's a reason why it's a different animal. So I did a similar speech about this, this lecture like this at Build, because uh, I'm a member there, a year ago. And the number one question was, um, how do I generate leads, right? So that was like, I didn't know how to do that now. The cause and effect of my year from then till now, I've learned how to generate leads, right? So these are some of the faces that I give my trades and my clients whenever they're asking me questions. So the, this is reality. 90% of my leads are from social media. I'm on eight platforms right now. But there's three that are the, the winners, okay? So I get calls all the time, and about four or five months ago, it was one call a week to come and quote. Now it's every day. It's just ridiculous how many calls I'm getting. It, it, people get online, they see me, and all of a sudden they start thinking, I want to talk to this guy. This is 100% of my subtrades. I'm getting bombarded by people who want to work for me, work or be on my list or you know, kind of generate the same mentality that I'm building, right? So suppliers are loving this. I started from commercials and I started going in as a marketing expert. I went in and going, nobody's really doing anything interesting with construction brands. Nobody at all. It's just like the generic same thing, guy standing there talking, sales guy. It's, it's just boring. So they're all bombarding me, right? So now here's the good, the bad, the ugly. There's going to be a lot of film references, right? So of social media, right? So I looked at social at, at construction and it wasn't fun enough for me. So Brady Bunch. I started thinking color. Color is a big thing for me. And you guys will notice if you go to my feeds, color is massive for me because when I started looking at anybody's construction feeds, it was the same kind of tonality and it was really, really boring. So I thought, what's missing from here is color, right? So I just started anything to do, color. Instagram is the platform that you should be on. Okay, I'm on eight. It's stupid. It's greedy. There's reasons why I'm on aid, but Instagram is a primary one. And I'll be honest, a year ago, I was less than 1,000. Today, I'm at 42,100 or something like that, right? It just keeps on growing. There's this um, mechanism. It just There's reasons behind how it's growing and why it's growing, right? So you can already start to see the color. So YouTube is my next one. So now YouTube, I'm almost at 4,000 subscribers, and it's been growing almost as quickly as Instagram. I've been watching these graphs and just paying attention to it. Video content is very important, right? I'm not talking about camera selfies on the job site and walking around and going, we just installed this because anybody who's watched Blair Witch Project hates that movie, right? So Pinterest is my next little baby that I'm going to nurture because I think Pinterest has the ability to become Instagram, what it was a year ago. Pinterest has the same ideas as Instagram. It gives you options. You can come up with theme boards. People can come in, clients can come in, check it out. It could be the finished product, it could be in progress product, it could be construction, it could be anything, right? So Pinterest is my next baby that I'm going to be working on. House is great. But house, as some of you guys probably know, they're salespeople. They're, they bombard you with like, okay, would you like to do this geotargeting crap? And I'm like, no, I've done the call already, I don't want to do it again, okay? But it's been growing nicely for me, so I still nurture house, right? Facebook sucks. 
Facebook is designed for anybody that's 40 plus, whatever. The kids are not paying attention to it. You put a post. The second you put a post, would you like to boost this? We'll get a thousand Mexicans to boost it for you. And I'm like, this sucks. This has nothing to do with my business. I don't want to care. So I basically just feed it and I let it just keep on going on its own. I don't focus on it. I just feed it. Twitter sucks. It does. Twitter for construction is useless. Completely. This is my opinion. Okay. 140 characters. I can't tell a story in 140 characters. I just can't. I can't explain what I'm doing on a construction site in 140 characters. 45 second videos. I can't do that. It's just, it's limiting. So limiting. So then it's boring to me. So I basically do the same thing I do with Facebook. I just feed it. That's all I do. So you'll pay attention to that. Okay. So Facebook has been growing kind of steadily, right? And same with YouTube. But Instagram is the one from a year ago to now. It just exploded. And a lot of other contractors have paid attention to Instagram and what it's doing too. And that's where most of my leads are coming from. It's coming from Instagram, surprisingly, some from Facebook, and the rest is all from house. People find me on house, and then they, but they primarily find me on Instagram because the first question I ask anybody who contacts me is where do, where do you find me? How'd you find me? And it's always Instagram or house, right? So these are just some stats of who I'm talking to and people who are paying attention, who's following, and stuff like that. The primary thing, if you want to get into this game of social media, is you have to be willing to share. In the beginning, a lot of my sub trades were like, why are you giving up that? That's a good idea. Why are you giving up that? That's what makes you unique. Why are you giving up that? So in the beginning, it was like 100%, I'm going to give up everything. I don't care. I learned a lesson in film school where there was one student, a friend of mine, he didn't want to, like, he was baiting this one film, and he was like, he didn't want to do anything else but this one film. And I'm like, You're, it's still called a show business, right? This is still a business. If you have one idea, you're not going to survive. So I thought, I've got thousands of construction ideas. But then I started thinking, hang on a sec, I am coming up with some interesting ideas. So I'm going to pull back 90% of this shit I give up, right? And the rest of it I keep to myself. So you got to share. So posts. These are a fraction of the business cards of people. Like I said, I didn't know about construction. But I met a lot of people, IDS, IBS, KBS. I meet people and I got their business cards and I asked them the questions and then I started learning. Because a lot of other people that follow me on Instagram, how did you get started? What is your story? And I ask questions. In school, I was the kid way at the back, head down, no answer. That's it. I wasn't going to participate. Film school, though, front of the class paying attention. Construction, front of the job site paying attention, asking every single question. I had to. So I start sharing. I start coming up with ideas, putting wood in a shower, keeping it waterproof, pissing off the Schluter boys, figuring out how to do this. You can't share this, Manny. But then they say, it's beautiful. Can you share it? So you got to share it. You got to be able to share your ideas. If you don't want to share your ideas, you will not generate those leads. You will not. So pencil rail that I cut on a 27, I think, in a, I can't remember the angles exactly, but I cut it uh, on a regular tile saw. That was another thing is I wanted to show people that you can do it with the regular tools that we have in our kit. I didn't want to explain to people, you got to go to the fabricator. But I learned the tricks from the fabricator, and then they would just say, keep it quiet between us, right? So here you go. It's sharing, right? Then I came this one, and this one became a little bit of a game changer, right? And the reason is I don't know how many showers you guys have built, but every time I go into a shower, it could always be improved, in my opinion. So I started thinking, I want to build a shower where there's no 90-degree corners. But everybody says it's a urinal. Does anybody know any Kohler products? It's a seat. You got to put your leg up to shave your legs or under, you know, wash the undercarriage. It's a seat, man. So I had a lot of clients contact me going, I love that. Can we, want, can we borrow that? Can we use it? I'm like, good luck. Like, this was not an easy one to figure out. I'll, I'll hint because I didn't give up. This was the first one that my sub trades were saying, don't give this up. You should hang on to this. But I'll give you guys a hint. I used an exterior product to make this work because I thought it's outside and Mother Nature is worse than a shower. So I'll use it in a shower, and yeah, it worked. So I did frame it. I figured it out, did all that stuff. I started sharing. Everything you see here has been shared online, right? So it's fully waterproofed. It's all taken care of. Nothing funny. It's expensive. One thing I, got, I, I learned early on from my fabricator that he taught me was anything you can do with wood, because I was really good at wood, I can do with stone, he would say. So I was like, that opened up everything for me. The moment he told me that anything you could do with wood, I could do with stone, then I started thinking, I could do that with stone too. So I started thinking that mentality, right? So I started shaping. So I took a router with a really crappy Freud bit, and that's limestone. I wouldn't do this with granite. 
and it worked. It didn't jump, it didn't skip, it wasn't dangerous, it wasn't freaking out. I did a bull nose because if I went to a fabricator, he would have charged me 13 bucks a linear foot to do that. And I did that on a Saturday afternoon and took care of the whole shower. So I share that, right? You have to be willing to share this stuff. Just little woodworking details. That's how you get engagement. That's how you get people asking you questions. How did you do that? Why did you do that? Where did you? What product did you use? All this other stuff. Then it got me going, I got to start planning my pages now. I got to start coming up with themes. Everyone knows Throwback Thursdays, right? Throwback Thursdays suck. I don't have enough of a history to give me Throwback Thursdays, right? Maybe 10 years from now I'll do Throwback Thursdays. So I started with Motivational Mondays. Color, though. So every Monday morning, I post something. Most of the time, it's construction related, or I find it relevant to what's going on. And even Jack Sparrow, I could take a quote. All right? So color. Every Monday morning, and I've got guys contacting me going, loved your quote this morning, loved your quote this morning. One little piece of information that I learned, because a lot of the guys on Instagram were laughing at me. They were saying, why are you putting these stupid quotes on? Why are you doing these Dr. Sue quotes and all this other shit? I started seeing a spike in women. My women started following because of these quotes. And I started saying to the guys, kiss my ass. Women are now following me. So I have, like, there's every Monday you'll see me put this, and I'll always do it with a color on the back because it just starts to make my page look a certain way. Trade Tips Tuesdays. So Trade Tip, tip Tuesdays, it's ideas. So mechanical room, atmospheric furnace, I don't want to put a grill on the side. I just made it into the door. I just show people how do I do a hard run, and all of a sudden, you know, people, I'm just riveted. This one's a good one. I love this one. This one was questionable, right? So I was working with a sub trade that I found on Instagram. He came in. He was doing some trim work for me. Uh, he said he was good. He started doing the work. I started seeing these 16th inch, why is he getting loud all of a sudden? 16-inch gaps. I complained about the 16-inch gaps. One sixteenth of an inch gap. I complained about it. And he goes, no, 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 we can fill that with DAP. So I said, if you fill that with your DAP, you're a painter, you're not a finished carpenter. I've only been in the business a little while. He's been in the business decades. So I went home, grabbed all my tape measures, put them together, took a photograph, wrote a story. And I explained the whole 16th of an inch gap. Then I said, what if this finished carpenter were to take an X-Acto knife and slice a 16th of an inch off the tip of his penis and tell me, is that a big deal? It resonated so well with people. I even asked, this is true, I even asked women, is this too much? And they're like, no, that's actually great. All the guys had a problem with me expressing that thought. Working Wednesdays, here's an opportunity for me to feature someone that I respect. Oh, the surprise is out. So one of my sub-trades. So someone who you know, takes the pride. This is all going to get covered up with foam. Laser lines all this, drills all this holes, takes the pride. So I do a post, Working Wednesdays. I talk about Barry. I talk about Tricolor. I give him a shout out. I add his handle, Working Wednesdays, every Wednesday. Here's my plumber. Been doing it since he's 18. We always screw around. That was all in Italian. You know, he's a crusty old Italian guy. He's a nice guy. You know, they're hard to find, I guess, right? But no, he's, he's, a, he's a super nice guy, a rock star, right? Then we have these boys, but I couldn't add a handle or anything because they're on Twitter. Someone could have started a conversation because we were talking about air tightness and you guys were first visit on the job site and stuff like that. So I just, teaching Thursdays was a new thing because throwback Thursdays I don't want to do. So teaching Thursdays, I thought I still have more to share. I started thinking I can share Stuff about the film, about photography, about social media, about how I got here, or what am I doing, and all this other stuff. I get 90% of it, not, not the whole bit, 90% of it, right? So I came up with a lot of this imagery, and I put it together, and then I post it, and all of a sudden I'm going to be talking about a bunch of things. This is a regular photograph taken on a job site from an iPhone. Teaching Thursdays, with about 10 seconds on your iPhone through Instagram, this is what the image becomes. Like everyone's familiar with these filters. They're so easy, right? Photographers hate it because they were perfecting these things, these things in the 70s and 80s. But now we can make these images look so much better. Making images look better on Instagram is really important because that's what people look at and they want to check it out. And then, then the story attached to it. Then I posted my actual real quote and hid. This one exploded. 
Then I thought to myself, no other contractor has actually put their quote online and shared it. And then people were emailing me for weeks after that, can you please send me a copy? Can you please send me a copy? I want to see. So it was like this dialogue between contractors and myself. Transparency, going back to clients. Feature Fridays is more about the brands. I talk about a product. I show some features about it. It's, it's still growing. Weekend did is another project idea that I thought, well, you can always do some two-day projects on the weekend or three-day if it's a long weekend. So then I took these pallets because I was at a meeting somewhere and I was like, hey, I like those pallets. And I made these mason jar crates because I'm a Portuguese, so there's mason jars in my life. And then I used these tools to do it. So I, I came up with this, took these, made these with these. And I resonated. Okay, so now here's the other gripe that some of the guys on Instagram have a problem with me. I'm sure there's other ones. They think Instagram has to be instant. I disagree, right? You tell me if any one of those pictures was taken today or when. doesn't matter. All I care about is if a client or a sub-trade or a supplier, what the hell is he talking about here? I want to know what he's talking about there. What's this mean? What's that mean? I want to look at this video. I want to look at this video. I do not care about Instagram being instant. I care about how you make your platform, your business, your brand look because clients that care about you and they're interested in you will go back and check out your posts. I guarantee you they will because I've been in meetings where they're going, you did a post and it was like six months ago. They go back. You have to plan these posts. That's more important than grabbing a picture and all of a sudden taking the picture and then getting it out there before anybody else can get out there. You have to plan every single post. I plan it. I spend half my days on Sundays planning my post for the week. That's what I do, right? So you have to tell a story with all your posts, right? Someone's got to be intrigued by this story. You have to start a conversation. You have to drop a little breadcrumb so Hansel, you know, they can come along and go, wait a minute, you were saying here, I want to ask you about this. I want to ask you about that. You start a conversation that way, and it turns into construction. Here's the post that I did. That was a picture. So I had a story. I told a story, and I said, this is Ziggy myself. This is what happened. We're going into a long weekend. Get a phone call from my lumber supplier. Some of you guys that are following me online know this story, right? So he says to me, the open web joists are going to be delayed. They're not going to show up until next week. And I said, well, we want to finish the floor before the long weekend, because that's the issue. We can't get those joists to you before the long weekend. It's not like ordering a pizza. That's what he said to me, right? At which point, I freaked out. And it was just like colorful language, right? And Ziggy overhears this whole conversation after he's not going to do it. And Ziggy says to me, Manny, where is it? I tell him. And he goes, I say, it's two hours away. He goes, let's drive tomorrow. I was like, Ziggy, it's two hours away. He goes, let's drive tomorrow. So we left at 5.30, arrived there at 7.30, loaded up by 8 o'clock. We got back to the job site by 10.30. And we were installing them. We were done. By the end of the week, we were eating pizza and drinking tiskies, and he wasn't my rep anymore. And everybody loved that part of the story. Right? And they all resonated with that. They've all been told before. They've been on a job site, dealt with a, a, a rep who says, I don't care about your job, basically. You know what I mean? And I'm like, you should be caring about my job. 648 likes just from an image of a van that's open. There's some questions about MTO and officers. We actually drove by them. We waved. There's no flag. We know that. Hashtags are really important. But hang on a sec. Don't, because you're in the construction industry, think that every single one of your hashtags has to be construction related. Think about hashtags. There is a limit. But what's going on in Toronto right now? You got to start thinking, someone's listening to Oasis. I drink espressos. I ride a Ducati. Marvel movies are just Disney, so they fucking make a lot of money. Oh, there it is again, man. So you, you, you do your hashtag, you, you max them out, but it doesn't have to be 100% construction. You got to think about your clients. They're not 100% construction. They have their own lives. They have kids. They have other things that are going on. So you want them to be online doing their own personal things, do a search, add a hashtag, and your post comes up. There's patterns. I put this on because I'm working on this. <laughs> Out of wood, this is going to be a challenge. So that'll be get posted. So I'll give you guys some insight. I'm going to post this backwards. So I'm going to show the completed wall, and then I'm going to post it being removed backwards online because that's just entertaining. That's all. So when to post? Six o'clock in the morning. Well, I, I get up at five. 
Five o'clock in the morning, most contractors get up. They start their day, they have their kids, they have whatever. So they're rolling in around six or seven. So they all check the phone, they all check the feed, they all check what's going on, right? So that's what you want to talk to contractors and suppliers? First thing in the morning, excuse me. Clients, this is what I call the cubicle kick cap break. Three o'clock in the afternoon, they're lazy, they're not doing anything. Uh, they're, they're just like, oh, I'm on social media talking to whoever, and all of a sudden, I need a contractor. Hmm? I'm gonna go find somebody. That's the time, right? Then in the evening, all of them are going around there. They're all getting home from work, they're all getting together, they're all ending their day, they're checking out what's happening before they turn in and watch their shows on Netflix. Not me. So now designing a post. Color, or if you're American, color, right? So color, color, color is really big. I'm telling you right now, like construction has been this muted, crappy look for, for decades, and I've hated it. Color is really, really important. That's Fenway, by the way. I'll get to that. So, 96,000 and change views. Video is massive. Plan your video. Don't do the Blair Witch selfie. Walk around the job site. Try to get all the information in one 60-second clip. Think about one idea. Share one idea. Talk about one idea and set up a camera and just talk about it. Be clear, concise. So I get I have dozens of videos that are all in around that range, averaging about 15,000 to 20,000 views. So I'm always everybody's on a job site. We all have phones. I invested in a DSLR because I just there's more freedom. So I'm always taking it as part of my package. It's full of dust. It gets wrecked. It's got to get cleaned all the time. But it's part of the package, right? So, but I frame things as if I'm framing the final image. I'm thinking about that final image. It's really important to think about that final image, right? So I'm always putting the camera where I think I'm going to have that final image. And then I started doing this, and for whatever reason, this started really resonating with people. I just took the two images, layered them, and split it. So I just think about where that final, this one's massive. This one, when I was still early, 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 where is it? It was like I, I, w I was averaging about 100, 200 likes per post, and all of a sudden this one skyrocketed to 2,500. Something to do with the framing and curve and just the way it was all laid and stuff like that. I started asking questions, started resonating. All of a sudden I'm like going, okay, I get it. It makes sense. So I always, I call these the evolution of a room. Funny enough, this is my very first project, my first one. Um, so I'm always taking a photograph. I, this is the day I met the clients. Walking around for the very first time, ding dong, walk in, met the clients, taking around, I got my phone, take a picture, take a picture, take a picture. That's the very first photo that I took, and that's the same corner. Every, everyone liked this photo. I liked it too. So I post this one because the other one worked really well. Guy contacts me, emails me, goes, my basement looks like that, the top picture. Can you really make it look like that? Same photo, same walk around, same meeting the clients. So evolution, met the client, walked through here, took a picture. This was like god -off. That looked like Schluter, but that was a finish. Um, always showing them. So now do's and don'ts, right? We're almost getting to the end. We're almost getting to the end. It's pretty fast. I don't, I don't, okay, if you set up a business page, I, 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 I kind of pay attention to the idea of making it a business page. I follow other people too, because I'm curious about what they're doing. But all of a sudden, if uh, I'm following you, and then I see in a week your feet on a beach overlooking uh, uh, the ocean for like 100 photos, I'm going to stop following you. Because I'm following you for your construction, your mechanical guy, your contract, your plumber, whatever. I'm following you for that. If I'm seeing your toes, I'm getting sick of it. Same thing with baby photos. They're great, but I, I, I personally think you should separate the two. I think you should have a business account, and you should have a, bit, a personal account. I don't share anything me personally except for my vacation photos and there's always a element that's connected to construction. So this is from the Azores, my family's from the Azores, so this is a house that I came across and I started talking about this and I started talking about their structure and how they build things, right? Remember that old pattern thing? So I was in Pisa, so I got influenced and all of a sudden a client says, I need an accent wall over there. So then this, so I start posting these things. I'm in Tokyo and all of a sudden I'm like fascinated by structures that are centuries old, but I'm always connecting it back to what I'm doing. This is my business page. So things that don't work, these don't work. They don't. They do not. They do the Oliver Jeweler 
kind of mentality don't work. They approached me, I said, sure, I bet you any money you know. I was averaging about 400 likes, this is what I got. This is a good friend of mine who works at Door Rocks and he asked me if he could do it. I said, sure, I'll do it, but I don't expect anything. They don't, people don't like this. This is not a friendly image to look at. It's just not, right? Now, I do, and some people are surprised, I respond to every single person that asks me a question on social media. I respond to every single one unless they're disrespectful. If they're assholes, depends on the degree of asshole bill, I block them, right? So I turned 40, uh, I'm actually 45, but I turned 40,000, and all of a sudden, resolution, right? Yeah, I just, I come up with these, like, this shit just happens, right? And people really resonated with it. It's engaging. It gets, uh, I'm always thinking about new ways of looking at construction, because there's always new ways of doing things on a construction site. It doesn't have to be the exact same construction site, Monday through Friday, Saturday, if you guys are working. It doesn't. It could look different. Not real, Photoshop. So, um, and I made those two, by the way. So, I've done it with a plumber's torch. Don't tell Mr. Labor. There's a reason that now you kind of get and you understand how clients are sort of. I want to meet this guy. I'm kind of interested in his mentality or, or what have you, right? The way he looks at, and then you can't argue the work, right? So this was a nice post. I won't tell you guys what it was, but my dad passed. But there's a reason, and it has something with this. Um, but it really, people like that post, right? That's just <laughs> my nephew. He's older now, so this is an interesting one. If you're an American, so I do this. And I love it, Manny. I love it. Can you post it tomorrow? Sure, 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 Thermary. Um, next day I get an email. Don't post it. I was like, why? Because the brass says that uh, might create some racial tension. I was like, what are you talking about? Uh, they just might think there's some like, back backsplash about racial. And I'm like, what are you talking about? So he tried to explain it to me. I didn't understand. I said, fine, I won't post it. I left it alone for two months. It was sitting there on my desktop. I was like, Kevin, I'm posting it. I don't give a shit. Posted it, 400 likes, all positive. Everyone loved it. Not one racial... It's just Americans being Americans. This podcast is American? Uh, had some fun with that. It's really hard to hold 12-inch saw blades and smoke a cigar. Trust me, it's hard. The only thing photoshopped here is just the extra bit of smoke here. That's it. That was uncomfortable, and I'm not going to do it again. So you got to have fun. Construction, you gotta have fun. Yes, I was on the road. Yes, 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 yes. The hammer was. Yes, I, yes, yes. I know. I wasn't pulled over. So you gotta cross. You gotta let people know where you're going. Trade shows, but you don't do what most guys on Instagram are doing. You go to a trade show, and all of a sudden it's like 10,000 pictures of that trade show. Like you pick and choose. You pick and choose. I did this one, and I did a follow-up collage. That's all I did. Instagram now is offering multiple pictures. I think up to five or six or something like that. You can put in, so you can just swipe. So house, they did an article for me, third party, huge boost, huge boost, just from this house for like spending a half hour with this woman, Becky, and she did a write up on one of my projects. And it was a massive boost for me, and it was posted, and I was like, this is great, cross platform. Letting everybody know what's going on YouTube, on Instagram. The brands love giving me money to make these t-shirts, and the guys like the t-shirts when I give them away to them. So there's like 2,000 t-shirts been given out with my name on it, with another brand on the back. So I like doing it. Your website is still important, but this is what's important. It needs to be connected to social, not eight, one. It needs to be. Someone's going to tell you, check out so-and-so's website, and if you don't have a social button, they will not check you out any further. You need to be on social. I'm just telling you, it, all of my leads are getting from there. Now we come to trolls, and that's not these trolls. There's this internet troll bullshit out there, right? These trolls. So I grew 40,000 in one year, and all of a sudden people start getting lippy, and they start saying certain things, or they want to use your platform as a political, or they want to get derogatory to whatever. I don't accept it. I won't engage. You just do not engage with them. You do not talk with them. You leave them alone. If they keep on persisting, you block them, you report them, and then moves on. I do not have the time to deal with trolls. So I did this one. I still don't know who wrote that. Sorry if I'm blocked. So my van is a reflection of my social media. 
everyone that sees my van is like they know who it is coming down the street. Right? They just I I was never interested in white van because I don't have puppies and I don't have a basket to put any lotion in it. All right? So I wanted a van that was going to be a lot more interesting looking. <laughs> So that's the real van that it's driving around right now. And then I've got plans for the next van because there's always things about, right? Uh, and you'll eventually get to a thousand. Once you get to a thousand, things start to change from there. You'll 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 find it a struggle in the beginning to get to a thousand, but you'll get to a thousand to be a certain pace because it wasn't until I reached about six or seven thousand that it just went like a rocket. But to get to a thousand was a huge thing to me, and and a thousand was like back in March or something like that. And I was like, I'm never, this is ridiculous. I would follow other people that are 20,000, 30,000, 40,000, whatever. I'm like, I'm never going to be there. Now I'm at 40. So now I'm just kind of just nurturing. I'm just babying it and just doing certain things, right? So how does this all attract leads now? Like, how do you guys think this all attracts leads? I'm so transparent with whatever I do on a construction site. I meet new clients. I'm there for hours. I'm having dinner. I'm like me and the whole family. It's just like they think they already know everything about me because they've seen everything I've offered, well, 90% online. So they have this comfort factor with me. That's why it translates to leads. And I'm not bullshitting. I'm not ego or anything like that. It is literally there's three calls already this week. We're Tuesday. And now I'm giving work away to other guys, that guys that I trust. So I can't keep up with it. It's just ridiculous. So that's how, if you build your business, you're honest about how you work, your ethics, how the quality and everything like that, it will attract clients, guaranteed. That's it.